The global power platform AI hack was a great success last year. Thousands of people joined all over the world and a grand total of 115 solutions were submitted. Elliot Fraser is here to tell us all about his grand prize winning solution. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Low Code Revolution. Today we are going to talk about the Global Power Platform AI hack. During the hack, we had a bunch of webinars on Power Platform and AI, but participants were also creating their own solutions based on the Power Platform and AI. Elliot Fraser won the hack, and he is here to show the Teacher Accelerator solution. Elliot, can you please introduce yourself to our viewers? Hey, Daniel, thanks for having me on. Uh... Nice to meet everyone. I'm Elliot Fraser. Um, I'm a power platform engineer based in the UK. Uh, I work for a company called ClearBank. And uh, yeah, as Daniel said, I, uh, I won the global AI, AI hack competition. Yeah. And how did you like the, uh, the, the whole hack? Yeah, it was great. Um, I had so much fun building the solution. I learned um, a lot throughout uh, building it. Um, and I'm actually trying to turn this into a, a real product now uh, and trying to help some teachers uh, um, with their day-to-day -day work. So uh, it's been really exciting and a great opportunity to work with uh, this, this new technology. Yeah, and during the hack, was that your first time that you worked with Power Platform and AI or did you already have a little bit of experience? Yeah, so um, in my day job, I work with Power Platform. Um, been working with that for around three and a half years now. Um, and then in the last year, uh, I've started to work with, with AI, specifically uh, OpenAI and, and ChatGPT. Um, so yeah, um, kind of new to the, the AI side, uh, and we're starting to do a lot of this uh, at my uh, company as well uh, that I work for. Um, so it was great to put this into practice during this hackathon. Yeah. And I believe you also can show us a little bit, right, about what you built? Yeah, I've got a demo if you're ready to see it. Ah, yeah, I would love to see it. OK, so yeah, here we are in the Teaching Accelerator. Uh, and the whole idea behind this was to um, help teachers kind of accelerate their teaching process. So particularly around uh, kind of building lesson plans um, for their, their classes. Uh, just a bit of background on this. Uh, I uh, got quite a few friends that are teachers and uh, these guys work really really hard um often working kind of 10 12 hour days even on weekends as well um and a lot of this is just uh due to um them not having enough time to to plan all these lessons and it takes a long time if you want to do your job really well um so that's what this app is trying to do is trying to accelerate some of that with the use of um, ai which we now uh, can use uh, via uh, OpenAI or uh, and uh, kind of the ChatGPT that I'm sure everyone's fam familiar with. Um, so this is a uh, a model driven app um, which the users can use to uh, to, to do that. So uh, it's from a little bit different, by here, the way. Um, it's a, it's yeah. a little bit different, right? Like yeah. if you normally yeah, go into a model driven app, you have the like the the view of uh, of all the items. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I think that's okay, but I think um, customizing the design a little bit makes it a lot mm -hmm. easier to use or more pleasant to use. Um, and it, I just think it looks better. So uh, this is yeah. what you call a custom page. And um, I've used these in a couple places throughout the app just to customize the user experience a little bit further. Um, so yeah, this is just a home page. Really, this is just helping you kind of navigate to different parts of the app. But I think uh, you could definitely extend this further and add, add a few more uh, things into this homepage. Um, Very cool. Yeah, feel free to jump in with questions. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> stick, to, stick to my demo. So um, I'm going to just hit create module for now. So um, the way uh, this is structured is we have a module which might have many lessons uh, underneath it uh, as part, part of it. Sorry. Uh, so let's first uh, plan out what this module. Is going to be so um there's quite a few fields here um we're not going to fill them all out now but i'm just going to give a module name so let's just say like computer 
computer science as our module um, that we're going to create. So I'm going to hit save. And we've got two ways we can interact with, with the AI here. We've got the AI wizard or we've got Ask GPT. Uh, this one we're going to use first is more of a um, kind of a, a quick way of generating content, whereas the um, the Ask GPT is um, a way to do this through a chat based interface. So first we're going to choose uh, which which field to generate. So uh, I'm going to create learning outcomes for now. I'm going to leave these custom instructions blank for a minute, and then I'm going to hit generate, and it's and it should now generate me some content based on um, only the module name at this point. Um, so there, it's done a pretty good job. So let's just hit save, and this will save this directly back to the app. Um, so the way I've built this um, is actually building up a context for the AI to, uh, to draw from when it goes and creates uh, more content. So if I now go to the AI wizard it sh uh, and open this again, it should have awareness of the module name and the learning outcomes now. So let's go and create another one. Let's maybe do the syllabus um, and hit generate. And if I wanted to, I could add some custom instructions there and it's just going to follow, follow those. So if you, are, if you say you want a syllabus that contains 10 lessons, um, you could do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's given us maybe a little bit more than we need here. So it's just added the module claims, even though we didn't ask for it. But let's just remove that. And it's done eight lessons for us, which I'm not going to read them now, but looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to save these. Um, and you already can see this literally taking a couple of seconds, and I've generated kind of half of my module already. Um, yeah, this is really cool. It, I can imagine that this would really help people to get started really quickly because normally when you look at a blank page or a blank screen, that's like the yeah, it it it, it doesn't go as fast as just having some text already and then editing it, of course. So I, I think this is a huge time saver. Yeah, I think um, I think um, it will. I think the name Teaching Accelerator is really good because it's going to accelerate yeah. the, the journey for the teachers, right? It's not going to replace anyone, at least not yet. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully, um, but yeah, it accelerates that, that process. So if you're kind of stuck for ideas, you can just generate some content, keep, keep generating it until kind of you get an idea that you're happy with, and then you can expand on that um, mm -hmm. with, your, with your ideas, I guess. Cool. So we've kind of generated half the module here. I'm going to move on to start generating some lessons. So if we go to this lessons tab, we can see we've got this empty sub subgrid here. So obviously we've got no lessons. Uh, we can create these manually, but I'm going to use the, the GPT chat window here to do this. So uh, by the way, these are custom pages that I've been launching inside here. Um, just like that home page, just a canvas app that we've embedded into into the model driven app here. Okay, so um, we've only got one thing we can do from this uh, from the module entity that we're working in. So it's create lessons. So I'm going to hit hit the create lesson button, and it should ask us some questions. So it's going to say, uh, "How many lessons would you like to create?" Uh, I'm going to say um, eight. Always say please to an AI, right? <laughs> uh, do you have any specific ideas or topics? Um, I'm going to say uh, please, uh, please. Um, so yeah, as I said, that record that we've been building up. Um, actually gets kind of added into the AI's context here so it understands what we're talking about. So I don't need to go and copy the module aims and the syllabus into this chat. It just knows mm -hmm. what those are. Okay, so now it's giving me a draft of of the lessons. Um, of, I could just keep chatting away with this, with this AI here and, and ask for something really specific if I wanted to. Um, but for now, I'm just going to say export 
And when I use that keyword, it just knows to actually go and uh, run a function that we've built into the AI. And it will go and um, actually create these records now and relate them to this module. So if we just give it a minute. And um, yeah, to come back to your, your earlier story about friends that are teachers, mm -hmm. uh, did you also show this to, uh, show this, uh, to him or to them? Yeah, yeah, I've got them using it as well. Um, <laughs> That's were, cool. My first testers, um, yeah, they really, really like it. And they've been giving me some really good, uh, good feedback and um, helping me straight on it. Oh, really nice. Yeah, I also like the the fact that you kind of have a chat kind of way to 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 get to this uh, to to all the lessons here, and then mm -hmm. also the export is really cool that you can yeah create all the records because that's normally like a really time consuming uh, thing in model driven apps when you have to add a lot of records that always um, yeah costs a lot of time. So uh, this is way better. Yeah, I think um, I think for anyone who's thinking about um, using um, OpenAI with um, with model driven apps or Canvas apps or anything where you want to start creating records, um, I would say look into the uh, like the functions they call it functions functionality. Um, mm -hmm. That's how we're that's how I'm leveraging that um, in this to actually um, get a kind of repeatable. Um, schema of of data that I can uh, yeah. pull into I automate and actually use that to create the records um, and save them into Dataverse. Yeah, pretty nice. Cool, so if I now close this window and go back to the lessons, we should see those have all been created. So we've got all eight rows. Um, I assume these will match what we were just discussing with the, with the AI. So let's just go into uh, maybe the introduction to computer science one and we can see uh, we've even got an objective that's been added in here. Um, okay, so we can go through the same process now, just filling out the different fields here. So um, it's the same process, really. We've got a few more options here. We can um, create an introduction, lecture script, activity, reading list, and these are all available um, via these buttons here. Oh, this is um, nice. So maybe I won't, for the sake of time, go into yeah. each of these now, but um, yeah, what I've done is predefined a load of different functions for this uh, for this AI and let the user choose it right at the start of the conversation. Um, and then I give the, the AI a little bit more context as to what we actually want it to do. So um, it will have slightly different instructions depending on if we're creating a lesson activity or if we're creating a reading list, for example. Yeah, I really like the fact that this is context aware. So when you are in a lesson, you get different uh, different options than when you are in a, in a module, for instance. Yeah, and we actually bring the module context into the lesson as well. So it's kind of looking mm. up to its parent record and um, it knows that um, this is part of the computer science module uh, and yeah. all the, the module aims associated with that. Very cool. Cool. So, um, yeah, so the teacher would go and create all of those. And mm -hmm. I'll show you something I'm working on. It's still not finished yet, but um, I want to have a way for users to, to create additional content as part of that lesson. So this might be uh, things like quizzes or slideshows, or, yeah, PowerPoint slides, pictures maybe. Uh, the first one I've worked on is creating um, a lecture script and an audio uh, file output um, for uh, for the lesson. So maybe they want some audio over the top of a slide or they're creating a video for their class. Um, we can now do that through the Teaching Accelerator. So if I go to the content tab, and for now I need to do this manually, I'm gonna hit create lesson content. And I'm gonna call this um, intro slide. Let's give it a quick description. Now this, so, so it knows what we're talking about. And I go into the AI wizard again. Um, and all the only thing I can do is create a lesson, lesson content script. So mm -hmm. I'm going to hit generate. 
and we'll see what we get. Okay, so we've got a lecture script that someone could read out if they wanted to. Uh, I'm just going to remove a lot of this for now so we're not getting loops of audio and go to the text to speech tab now. Uh, now, this is using, again, OpenAI's uh, text to speech uh, API. So uh, we can choose kind of standard or high quality. We can choose uh, one of several voices. I quite like this one, so I'm going to leave it there. And then also change the speed if we want to. I'm going to leave that there as well. And hit save and generate now. And yeah, as I said, this is going to come out to OpenAI's uh, API, and it's going to generate an audio file um, for the user. So if we hit play now, hopefully you guys can hear. Uh, Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Welcome to the computer science module. Today, we're going to dive into the exciting world of computer science and explore the fundamental concepts that form the backbone of this field. Oh, nice. So there we go. Yeah, and I think um, I've tried a few text-to-speech um, options, and mm -hmm. uh, this is far the best one. I think it sounds kind of as close to um, realistic uh, as any I've ever heard. So uh, really impressive what they're doing. Um, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Another edition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, as I say, I'm trying to turn this into a product, so uh, I am going to continue building on this uh, and add more features, so uh, I'm going to rely on my teaching friends to keep giving me feedback, and <laughs> if anyone watching uh, has got any ideas, yeah, feel free to uh, uh, reach out to me. Yeah, I'm sure people will reach out or leave comments in the, under the video. Uh, because this is a really, really cool, uh, cool solution, and uh, it totally shows what we also aimed for with the uh, with the hack. Because um, these kinds of solutions are what we really want to see, of course, like the the, the really combining of low code and AI is uh, is such a powerful combination. And as you can see, these kinds of solutions are really helping the world. So uh, I think that's a, that's a great uh, great solution. Well, thanks, Elliot. Um, I loved seeing the solution. It's a it's a beautiful solution, and that's also why you won, of course. <laughs> and uh, I can't wait for yeah seeing uh, uh, when what you what you do next. Actually, with the uh, with bringing out the solution and uh, putting it on App Source, uh, I would love to uh, uh, love to see it evolve at least. And um, yeah, to our viewers, um, I hope you like this video, and please like and subscribe and leave comments below if you uh, have some questions for Elliot. I'll make sure that he uh, he hears them. And if you have feedback on the app, also let it know. I'll make sure that I pass it along. And uh, yeah, hope to see you at the next episode.